welcome to another episode of Subscription E-Commerce Live. I'm your host, Ashley Gattuso. Uh, we're joined with um, today by Seth Morris, who is always in the background um, doing our tech uh, work. So thanks for being with me, Seth. It feels odd not to be welcoming a guest, so I'm welcoming you at this point. Um, today, we're kind of turning the, the mirror on ourselves and talking about a little something we like to call your delay retention rate. So for subscription sellers, we are going to be defining what the delay retention rate is, why it matters, and what some benchmarks are in um, the subscription industry, the subscription e-commerce industry, as well as going into a case study um, from a customer that had delays turned off or delays didn't exist before um, and then turned them on and saw some impressive results. So I'm just going to dive right in and um, give you our only little promotional bit right now, which is that this is brought to you by ARPU. We provide upcoming shipment notifications that increase AOV and LTV while reducing churn with two-click upsells and delays. That can include custom messages based on subscription products or renewal counts so that can support your loyalty program. You can also use Shopify tags to trigger very highly relevant messages to your subscribers, letting them know their subscription is about to ship soon and they will be charged. And would they like to buy one of these six or eight upsell items that you've got in that email in just two clicks? Um, we serve recharge payments Shopify and big commerce platforms. You can find out more at getarpu.com. All right, let's pull back the curtain and talk a little bit about something called your delay retention rate. I'm going to set the scene um, by first discussing the fact that there are reasons people need to delay their subscriptions on occasion. Those include having too much product, going out of town, and maybe needing to cut back financially, temporarily. Like they think I won't buy this now, but I still want it when I can, right? So giving them the option to delay means that they do not have to cancel. So that may be, uh, what is the right word for this? When you push something a little bit forward, it it's delayed revenue, I guess is, is the way you would call that, but it's still, part of LTV that you can expect at the point at which they have a successful charge, right? So part of offering those delays um, is, is this premise that we come across with Recharge a lot that ARPU highly supports, which is flexible subscriptions. And that is the idea that you have complete control of your subscription and can easily make adjustments to it that leads to higher lifetime values for subscription merchants. So offering delays can both boost retention and increase LTV, but a lot of times people are a little bit scared of doing it. And I remember um, a long time ago talking with a recharge um, expert who was able to say, okay, if a merchant is afraid of turning on delays or offering delays, it is likely because they think that when they send this delay, they will see um, when they, when they, or no, if they were afraid of sending an upcoming charge notification, that's what it was, that they would then see um, a bunch of churn. And when they did a study, what they saw is, well, the, the churn happens either way. It's just a matter of whether it happens right after a friendly reminder that you're about to be charged before that charge happens or after when they get the product in their house and they realize, oh, I didn't want this again. I'll go back in and cancel. It's a little bit similar when you offer delays. It feels counterintuitive to say I will increase lifetime value by giving people a chance to not get my product. But what you're doing is you're giving them a chance to push off getting your product for whatever one of those reasons that they have. So at ARPU, we have always sold the product and still do based on the fact that the upsells you can put in your email that people can buy in two clicks, we, we guarantee a 5X on software spend in upsell revenue. 
So it's always been a really easy no brainer for a merchant to think about. But what we hadn't done before was, um, I think about a year ago, was really dig into the value of delays and seeing what offering delays, like our set of merchants, which is like a majority of merchants, put a delay option in their email. What we, what we hadn't done until that point was really dig into that data and look at how offering a delay in this email influences LTV. So when we started looking and I made um, a, a variety of people pull up spreadsheets and stare at them with me, uh, we discovered that across the platform, 60 plus, I think it was like 63% of delays that had, had been requested had then afterwards had a successful charge. So there's, there's your benchmark for ARPU in 2021 is, is that's what was happening. And then we looked even deeper and we noticed that the top performers, those who had um, the highest delay retention rates, because so I'm about to back up and do the math for us here, were maintaining more like 80% successful charges after someone had had a, a delay. So delay retention rate, if you haven't like kind of mathematically figured it out yet, um, is the percentage of customers who resume their subscription after delaying them. So 63%, is really good compared to if they had gone and canceled and then you had to play a win back. Um, because a lot of times when you're doing a win back campaign or flow, you're, you're getting more like under 10% to, to, to buy again with you or to re-up their subscription. But with um, the delay retention rate is you're retaining like of that 63%, like that's, 100% retained revenue towards your LTV, like of, of the 63, right? And so basically the way you calculate that um, is to look at successful charges after delays and divide that by the total number of delays and then multiply it by 100. It's a, it's a basic percentage calculation, right? And what that tells you is these are our retained subscribers. And retained subscribers equals retained revenue. So we went through those ARPU benchmarks. Again, they were 60%, I think 63 on average in 2021 with like 80% for the top performers. Like the top 5% of people who were offering delays were getting 80%. So we wanted to look into who was doing this well and why. And it came down to recognizing when we, when we started pulling, like who are the top performers? It came down to recognizing that there was um, one business in particular who had been on the platform both before and after delays were even introduced as a function within the platform. And that was Jimmy Joy. So I'm gonna start screen sharing. Um, Give me a thumbs up, Seth, if things that I share come up. Give me a sec. Here we go. All right. Do you have my Chrome screen? Excellent. Okay, so what Jimmy Joy did was and, and we've got a video. This is our what we call our proof page on ARPU. And, and we did some video interviews because I firmly believe that case studies don't hit as firmly if it's not the customer's words. And, and these are videos of the customers telling their stories versus us telling them for them, um, that those resonate more strongly. But what we dug into with Otto over at Jimmy Joy was that before delays, they were looking in the recharge metrics and they had 45% of their churn um, allocated as due to too much product. In other words, their snack was about to be sent again and they still had too much to justify wanting more in their pantry at that moment, 
right? I haven't eaten all of the stuff that you've already sent me. So I'd like to delay it. And after they added that delay, which I'm gonna kind of fast forward in the video or maybe even change to another page of the website to show you what their delay looks like, that was cut in half. So it went down to like between 50 and 20% of churn saying it was too much product. They average a 58, or the last time we checked, 58% um, delay retention rate. So the reason that their delay works so well is, let me go find, yeah, they're on this page and you'll get to see it, that they make it super prominent and obvious. So this is the flow that they're giving their customer. So email opens, big important block, are you not ready? That's okay. Choose when you want this to come and then they're done. They don't have to log into the portal. They can just bump it that quickly. Need to delay, that's okay. That's what, that's what they choose. And introducing that cut their, their churn for too much product, which was 45% down to 15 to 20%. So it's something to consider if you are not already offering delays or if you're offering delays right now, but you're making it a really little text link way down at the bottom of the email and you have a retention issue that you are trying to address. If, if delays would solve your retention issue, I would suggest testing, putting it up top for one of your cohorts or one of your products, um, like in having a campaign trigger off of that product and see how that performs um, to see if delays across your entire uh, customer base would be a smart idea, which my assumption is it will, because when you make it easy for someone to make a change to their, their subscription, then even if they eventually ended up canceling, they would always have good word of mouth and things to say about you because they never felt like you were trying to um, charge them without them having the option to adjust something if they wanted to. And it's kind of becoming a, an expectation of subscribers in the modern day. So we're gonna look at um, a peek at what's coming just real quick in the ARPU dashboard so that you can understand um, what those deep dives into delay data uh, started spinning in our minds um, for things that we wanted to create for our customers. But one quick thing before that, I'm gonna drop this link into the chat. And that is a blog article around this topic that we just um, released at the end of last week, which will supplement the content that we're talking about today. So posting that over into the chat. And if anyone wants to go check out that blog or read the Jimmy Joy story, it's captured there as well. All right, stop screen sharing this. And then what I'm going to screen share is actually some mock-ups of some new things that we're gonna be doing in the merchant dashboard, which some of which should be coming fairly quickly, like summer 2022. Others will follow behind that. So what I'm showing you right now is close to what it may be, but we are also, if, if you see something that prompts you and you have an idea about what you as a merchant would like to see, we are open um, to suggestion while we're still in this phase because different pieces are being handed to development. And as always, we can put something on our roadmap if we see that it fits uh, within the scheme of what we want to create for our merchants. Because we want, we want there to be delayed data that you can use to make decisions about how you market your product, how you sell your product, and how you maybe even bundle your product. So in terms of um, what amount of product at what cadence makes the most sense to promote more than others because it gets delayed less than others it, and helping customers find the right cadence for them. So I am going to screen share my entire screen and get us into looking at some of the things that are coming. Store-wide, I'll start here first. 
Everybody good and can see? Thumbs up from Seth, excellent. Okay, so what we've got going on is we're gonna feed you some all-time data up top, which includes all-time revenue, all-time ROI, um, which again, the five is guaranteed, and then your all-time delay retention rate. So you're gonna see over time what percentage of delays resulted in later successful charges. Then down here, and I'm gonna do a close up of this so you don't have to deal with my Zoom here. Um, this is some, in the middle of the page, I'll just go ahead and let you know, like it, it's some of the metrics we tend to report in terms of your revenue, your email sent, your revenue per email, your open rate, your click-through rate, your conversion rate. Those are like typical ESP um, metrics that you're going to see. But beyond that, see if I can find it. Yes, okay, here it is. So this is like a delays tab that will be at the bottom of that page that I just showed you. Um, and we have a products tab too, which I'll like give you a sneak peek at at the end, even though this session isn't about uh, upsells. Um, but what we're looking at is giving you revenue retained from delays, total number of delays. And I know all of this doesn't add up. Remember, these are mock-ups. Remember, they're mock-ups, please. Um, so total delays and then like delays per email, as well as a ranked list of your most delayed products, right? So you can start to see which products get delayed most frequently and then start to dig into maybe figuring out why. Is it just too much for the cadence you suggest? And can you follow that with a suggestion to them to get the product that is half as much of what you've been selling them so that it is a more consistent um, what would, excuse me, a more consistent charge versus a, a charge, a delayed charge, a charge, a delayed charge, just depending on what you start to learn from those most delayed products. You can also start to look at, um, like variants and, and things along those lines and the revenue that is retained um, when they do have a successful charge. I was also given this, and I don't play around in this bit of the, the software as much. Here it is. Um, but I think it's going to be helpful. You know, when we have like our recent activity and, and what has and what hasn't happened, we're going to be showing you in this board the delay events. So in other words, you can come in here and look and see open, clicked, purchased, or delayed, um, and have that be something that you know is happening. So this one might have canceled, this one might have scheduled for a different date. I think that that's what it's going to show, but I'm going to be crazy honest and say like this is something I haven't um, been as exposed to. And as promised, that other product, y'all, I'm like chasing the little um, gallery and the screen share things to be able to show stuff. So this would be the product tab, which is also really exciting. Um, so in like direct opposition to like what gets delayed the most, this would be what gets upsold the most, right? And how much total revenue um, does that generate of your upsells and what quantity, et cetera. And then your, your top uh, upsold products, right? So you can start to see what you may or may not want to be putting in all of your campaigns or some of your campaigns or, or what, like which, which ones are the most popular and are um, representing the, the highest percentage of your upsells so that you can make very wise decisions, I assume, um, based on what, what upsell uh, products to put in there. I think it would also be very cool eventually 
as you look at um, a customer who has maybe bought something as an upsell multiple times to then put them into a campaign that says, um, do you want to just add this to your subscription, which is a feature we are finalizing right now. So you would be able to do that uh, once we get to that point. So that's just a sneak peek. Um, I'm looking in the chat because I feel like I saw something happen there, which makes me happy. I'm going to stop the screen share unless someone shouts at me and says, no, put it back up. I want to see things. Um, Okay, Jill says that that ranked list will be helpful. I think so too, because I think a lot of the times we're not quite sure why people don't want the product or it if it's like what 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 skews are too much at what cadence, and then to start looking at should we be suggesting this at a slightly adjusted cadence. Um, so I think it will all be very nuanced based on what you sell and how you sell it and. And things along those lines, but very excited to introduce those. Delay retention rate is actually, I mean, it's kind of simple, but we are we are big on it, especially because we know that retention is a tough, it's almost a tough lane to play in sometimes, but it deserves investment and it deserves thoughtful um, marketing and an approach to how you are going to market to your customers. And subscribers are a very special breed of existing customers who, who want to feel important and giving them the chance to make an adjustment to make that delay helps cement that relationship. And it helps prolong that subscription and that LTV, especially if you're offering different um, freebies or upsells or, or discounts or things along the, the subscriber journey so that maybe three months in you put in a trigger in a campaign that like hey it's we're excited you've been a subscriber for three months here are some special offers or here is a free thing you can claim etc so it kind of keeps them feeling like all of the touch points are highly relevant to them rather than a repeat of the same email each month that begins to um, grow stale, like in, in their mind. So we think delay retention rate is crazy cool. And we want it to be a, a thing that people talk about a year from now, like, oh yeah, you know what delayed retention rate is, right? You've measured it over time and seen how it's grown as you change the way you positioned delays in your email or just the way you promoted the product in the first place with an emphasis on the fact that that people have an opportunity to change something. So that's about all I have. I don't want to go long winded, but I am here if people have questions. So ask away if it's product related. I, I may or may not have a firm answer, but I can always get you one if if I don't know exactly. Um, every detail of the answer I should provide. So I'm gonna give people a couple of minutes to ask questions. Thank you for attending and let you know that we are, um, we're cooking up, Seth, this is gonna be a surprise to you. We're cooking up some new ideas um, for subscription e-commerce live. So I'm anticipating maybe taking off um, the last week in July and the month of August as we, change some things up, call this a wrap on season one, season one, and then potentially launch new shorter seasons that could include um, some deep dives on different topics. So like three or five sessions on setting up a particular strategy for your subscription e-commerce brand with or without, probably with, um, the help of an expert in that field. So as we think about what we want to position this as, because um, I am very anti getting stale, right? Like I don't want things to get stale. I want to continue to deliver what will serve you most. So what, what we may do is kind of let you, um, when we send out the replay for this, uh, send us a, um, 
any thoughts or feedback that you have. I, I do see that we had one comment about thanking us for the information and that these discussions are insightful. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. And that deep dives would be great. Okay, good. So we already have one little bit of feedback that maybe validates where my brain has been going with this. Um, that said, you might hear from us or you might not um, during the, the second official like date of the July session of subscription e-commerce live. Maybe we'll just hop on and do like a recap of the top 10 ideas that we got from this season or something along those lines. But um, if not, see you again in September. And thanks for joining.